Welcome to Biblio Bistro. My name is Megan Jazak, and I'm a registered dietitian and community health educator with the Portage Health Foundation. And today I have with me Michael Sinaitis, who is the program coordinator and chef extraordinaire with the Portage Lake District Library. For those of you that are new to Biblio Bistro, this is a cooking series in partnership with the foundation and the library that features simple recipes with seasonal and local produce that are budget friendly. Megan, what are we cooking tonight? We are cooking a rosemary, potato, and cauliflower mash, Michael. Mm, that sounds really yummy and totally different than just your regular straight up potato mash, eh? Yeah, absolutely. This is something um, around the holidays, whether it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, or if you just want mashed potatoes, it's, it's really nice. Um, you know, for those that are concerned about carb content, um, it's, it's still got some of the potatoes in it, so you're not going to totally miss out on that texture and the flavor but it does reduce it because we're using low carb veggies to mix in with it. And you're getting fiber with the veggies. Absolutely, and all sorts of a range of vitamins and minerals. Great. All right, well, um, I'm realizing we don't have the potatoes, so I should probably go grab those for you, shouldn't I? We're <laughs> making a potato mash. I could start on taking this cauliflower apart. because Yeah, that's... I would love for you to show them. Yeah, I that's... think it's pretty intimidating. Yep, I'm with you. So when I do it, while you're grabbing that, I'll just do this. I um, usually just cut the cauliflower off down here in the bottom. And then I take any of these extra little tough green things off, the leaves, I guess. Um, then I just go ahead and cut it, the head right in half. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is get that core out. So I um, do a pretty simple little thing. This is the same way I do cabbage, so I'm not really sure if this is like the way to do cauliflower. It just makes sense to me if you need to get that big core out, that that would be the way to go. So okay. I just go ahead, cut it in half, get in there, take that big core out. And then what's nice about this is anybody remembers from a previous video, if you have a flat surface to work on, right. everybody's safer. And then I just go in and just start to chunk it up a little bit like that, you know? And I'm assuming you probably don't need it any finer than that for the no. recipe. No. So that's how I do that one. And truthfully, as far as the broccoli goes, um, I kind of do it the same. Now, I use my broccoli stems at home for all sorts of other things, mm -hmm. salads or whatever. So if I'm not gonna use the stem in the recipe, I just take that off and throw that in a bag in the fridge. Mm -hmm. um, some, and then I'll just take a vegetable peeler to it and get the tough outer skin off. But I use that inside stuff because it's, doesn't yeah. it have lots of good things in it? It does. And it's something, you know, for this recipe, you could use that um, because we're gonna boil it down and oh, it's gonna yeah. get nice and soft. Totally. Um, or you could choose to use it for something else, but it certainly would work for this recipe. Nice, nice. Um, and the recipe actually doesn't call for broccoli, but as you guys, for those who have followed along, you know that sometimes we have to go off the cuff um, so I went to the farmer's market this weekend. I was very excited to get some cauliflower and gosh darn it, someone beat me to it. So um, we got some cauliflower from the store, but we still wanted to feature a local veggie. And so we got some beautiful local broccoli from the Borisma Family Roots Farm. Nice. Um, now, of course, that's gonna change the color. We can't get around that. But you know, you could even do for, for Christmas, you could almost do like a green mashed potato with cranberry sauce, do something kind of festive like green and um, red, you could do it for St. Patrick's Day if you're looking for something, oh. or even just getting fun with the kiddos and having monster mash of some sort. Sure. Um, or if you don't want to do that, then of course just stick with the cauliflower like the recipe calls for, but we're, we're here to show you you can deviate and it will still work. So. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So We've got cauliflower and potatoes. Perfect. So thank you for showing us how to chop that, Michael. That's super helpful. I did not know how to do that. So I, I chop it, but I don't chop it that way. So I don't create a flat surface like that. Oh. So I learned something yet again. You've done it. Yeah, anything, any vegetable that's round or fruit, make a flat surface and hang on to your fingers. Yes, I do like my fingers. So we have already pre-cooked some of this. What the recipe calls for is you basically boil everything together in chicken broth. So we have some chicken broth heating up here just because these were cooked ahead of time so we can kind of warm everything back up sure. and then we'll mash it. Um, we don't have a masher here today, so Michael's actually gonna show us another trick. So we have a whisk, which I can grab for you, Michael. Ha ha. Yes, we are gonna mash with a whisk. It can be done. 
I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So um, what you do is once, you know, we have some potatoes here we can kind of go to. These are local. Um, these are from the Gagno farm. Nice. Um, and you can leave the skin on and chop it that way if you prefer. That's obviously going to add some texture and color as well. Most people with mashed potatoes will peel it. And whether you compost it or if you have chickens, they might want to eat it. Or sure. you can just, you know, discard it or use it. Could you use that in stock? My yeah, God. you could use it in stock. I mean, I never peel my potatoes. You don't? Ever. No, I like to texture in a mashed really? potato. I like to hit the skin and have something to chew on. Because mashed potatoes, by the time you get them to the consistency of making mashed potatoes, it's like baby Our food. Our roles have reversed. I've yes. never done that yeah, with mashed Well, potatoes. yeah, it's it's fiber. Yeah, you would no, say true. it's fiber. It is. I know. That's what I'm saying. And the vitamins. The roles have reversed. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you, you could absolutely keep the skins on. Um, it's more a texture thing for people um, if you want that kind of that skin texture in the mashed sure. potato, but it would certainly work. There are more fiber in yeah. the skin. So and we are using russets right now. Yeah. So when I'm doing that, I'm a big fan of Yukon Golds yeah. and like you know, red potatoes mm -hmm. for mashed potatoes. And so that's a thinner skin and you kind of really don't notice it that much. It's just a little extra something, something. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And the russet was all we could find at the at the local store. So sure. um, whatever potato you want to use, you know, is fine. If you want to peel it, you can. Um, you're going to lose some of that fiber. That's okay. Um, or you can keep the, the skin on to get a little extra fiber. Um, so you will chop that up into little pieces. And as you can see, we have it peeled and chopped here. Um, and then we'll add that to the chicken broth as well as the chopped cauliflower. And then in our case, we're doing broccoli as well. Um, and when you're cooking that in, we also have a rosemary, a fresh rosemary sprig to give yes. it a little extra flavor. Right here. So we will throw those all together. Um, I think that's starting to heat up. Ooh, oh yeah, yes we're it there. Is. We're there. So I will just start handing you things, Michael. Okay. Now, are we doing all of it? I think because we have enough liquid in there. That's what the whole recipe is. But we could, we could okay. probably. I don't know. Do you want to start with like half and half? Let's see. Let's see how it's looking. I mean, the nice thing about this is we can um, we can add as we go along, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably about six or eight cups of potatoes in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe the recipe calls for about two pounds of potatoes okay. and then four cups total of cauliflower. So for us, we've got a mixture again. And you could just scale that down. Yep. If you, instead you were making mashed right. potatoes for two, Right, this you, is eight servings. Yeah, so. you could cut it down in half and that'd be pretty easy. Um, right. Okay, I'm gonna stop there with the potatoes until we get the cauliflower in, yeah? Okay. And I'm just gonna do all the cauliflower okay. because that looks like that's the way to go. Yeah. For sure, yeah. We're probably gonna need the potatoes. And are we gonna do the broccoli as well right I away? Think we should, what do you think? Why not? I think we should go for it. When we'll do Rome. our monster mash. Red and green, whatever holiday we're celebrating today. <laughs> we're celebrating it all. We're celebrating them all together. Now, um, I'm gonna get just get this all going on in here. Uh -huh. um, and let's see how my, I was a bit braggadocious about the whisk as the masher, wasn't I? You were. But and you know, if you know, push comes to shove, you could use an immersion blender as well. Um, oh, for right. those that are have watched any of our other episodes, we have used that in the past. I believe that was our chimichurri that we used oh, that, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. So that would be an option too if you want to speed it up. That might, you know, if you like a chunkier um, texture, it might get pretty smooth pretty quickly with something like an immersion blender. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Yep. Yeah. And um, and it's going to be not quite as smooth with the whisk. Yes. So if you like some, some chunk, then go, go with the whisk. Yeah. Or a masher. We just didn't have a masher today. So, um, and when we're looking at the nutrition of this, Michael, um, the chicken broth, you know, for us, we use a low sodium chicken broth. You could easily do a vegetable broth. And, you know, if you swap out the recipe calls for regular milk, we're actually using oat milk today. So if you wanted to make this completely vegetarian or vegan, you could easily swap out the chicken broth for a vegetable broth. Um, but yeah, it really, it's pretty simple. And, and in terms of the nutrition, we've got the broccoli and the cauliflower, kind of similar nutrition. Um, there's a sulfur compound in that that's been known to, it's linked with um, cancer protective qualities, particularly for colon cancer. Ooh. So 
it's particularly like cabbage, broccoli, those types of kind of robust veggies generally are linked with that particular sulfur compound. Um, they are a little tougher for people to digest. In this type of recipe where we're cooking that down, that's gonna be a lot better tolerated. So for those that can't maybe eat a lot of raw broccoli or cauliflower without stomach upset, this is a good way to still get those nutrients in um, without the stomach upset. Sure. Well. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's going. And I can see the rosemary in there too. So. Yes. How would you describe rosemary, Michael? I always, you know, I always think of rosemary with um, potatoes, but you could eat, cook it with other things, right? I, oh, I use it for a lot. I okay. use it on, well, it's really nice on lamb, mm. uh, but any roasted vegetable is okay. yummy with it. But I do use it on meat a lot as well, because okay. I think it's because it has a, that flavor is so mm. pungent and so strong. Like it, yeah. it really lasts. Like I made a beef roast yesterday mm -hmm. and I threw a couple, because I have it in the garden, you know, so it, right. it just makes sense to do it that way. So what we have to add still is the butter. The butter. Ooh. So again, if you're looking to make it a uh, vegetarian, that would still it. If you're looking for a vegan version of this, you would just need to tweak for a vegan butter substitute. Um, and the broth. Yeah, the broth would you would want to be a vegetable a stock. Vegetable stock. Yep. Sure. Yep. Sure. We're going good old butter. And you know, when we're looking at budget, we actually splurged a little bit on the butter. Um, I'm not sure what your take is on this, Michael, but I feel like upgrading it, you know, a dollar more for a higher quality butter makes a big difference in recipes. Yeah. And so that's yeah. something, you know, of course, if you're on a very strict budget, then you know, the lower, you know, the cheapest butter is still gonna work and it's still gonna be delicious. But if you've got like a, a dollar wiggle room, you can get a really nice product with yeah. just that small swap. Oh, <clears throat> it's worth it. Yes, for sure. I agree. I mean, butter makes everything better, right? I so, I so. mean, why wouldn't you want the best better you could have? The best better butter? Oh, the best better. Best you should make a butter. a butter company. That could be your slogan. Best better butter. Yeah. So we've got butter in there. That was about four tablespoons is what the recipe called for. For a full batch, again, you can scale that down if you're not looking for eight servings. Um, and then we also have some oat milk. Again, this is unsweetened. Um, I can't tolerate a lot of dairy butter and I are okay, but anything beyond that and I tend to have problems. So that was the main reason that we swapped out for oat milk for this recipe. You could certainly use regular milk if that's your fancy. Yeah. Um, or you could, you know, swap it out. Lactose-free milk would work. It's a little sweeter, so just be aware of that. Um, or you could do a, a different plant-based milk. I just would, again, opt for something unsweetened. No, no vanilla almond milk in this no recipe. Vanilla almond, no vanilla almond. Are we gonna salt and pepper in here as well? Absolutely. Now, one thing to pay attention to is if you're using chicken broth with salt mm -hmm. in it. I a little trick about chicken broth is if you buy a low sodium or no sodium chicken broth, yes. it will be a more flavorful broth because the manufacturers actually cheat by putting a lot of salt in. Yeah. Because salt to us, to our taste buds, translates to flavor. So not only is the lower sodium, sodium better for you in the long run, mm -hmm. but you'll get a better tasting product. I mean, salt is cheap. You can add as much as you want at yep. the end. And that's generally my preference too, to go unsalted and then add your own salt. Cause then again, like you said, you have the control with what level of salt you want to add to the dish. Whereas right. you can't really take it out once it's in there. Right. Um, the store, unfortunately, was out of the unsalted, so we did the best we could with the low sodium. Yeah, so I'm going to do the... How much pepper? I'm measuring. Oh my goodness, I say three more cracks. What do you think? Sounds good. Okay. And I'm just going to do a little bit of salt okay. until we taste test. Okay. This is kosher salt. Um, I use it a lot in cooking, mm -hmm. but um, it is easy to overdo it. Okay. Um, Kosher salt is, um, it just chemically, the way it's produced, it's a fluffier salt. Um, you're, you're, less is more. I, I don't think I need to say more than that. Just less is more, start out with a little bit. You can always add more salt, but you can't take it out. Because one way of taking salt out is by adding potatoes, right. and it's a potato dish. Right. So, we're there. Ooh, look at that. That's thickening up nice. We have, we have mashed veg for 12. <laughs> yeah, eight servings is, um, it's I a think lot. that's generous. 
And I'm just gonna do a little bit of the oat milk, just mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. there you go, yeah. Okay. Just to sort of get a little creaminess going on in there. Yep, so with most recipes that I've seen for mashed potatoes, that's generally how the, the milk content works. You kind of just mix in as much until you have the consistency that you prefer. Yep. So if you like it a little runnier, add more. Yep. Um, and yep. the nice thing is if you add too much, you can always just cook it down and it's gonna lose that liquid. True enough. Did you wanna taste a little and see where the salt is? Sure thing. Oh, look at I'm even going to do it the correct way. Oh my goodness. This evening. Spoon to spoon. I love it. Mm, I think it's perfect it's just good? like this. And I okay. taste the cauliflower. You do? It's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah, I'll turn this off so we don't get any bubbles. So, so we don't get burnt mash. No, that would not be good. So I'll have this be your bowl. Okay. It's really pretty. And I like it. I like the chunks in it myself. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it to be eating baby food myself. Like I'm, I'm really okay with having, I mean babies need baby food obviously, <laughs> right? Yes. But, but. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's totally up to preference. You, we both kind of like the texture, um, but you could always really blend it or mash it fine if that's your perf your preference. Mm -hmm. This is really good, Megan. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even though the recipe didn't call for the broccoli, I think I would do it this way because it really does. It's almost like having cream of broccoli that's and cream what of I was cauliflower. Gonna say, but it, it's like thicker. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, yeah. I think that was a good call. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mmm. Yummy. If you'd like to tune in and see our other episodes as well as get the shopping list and the full recipe, you can go to pldl.org slash biblio dash bistro. And for any additional information you're looking for on the recipe, whether that's the price per serving, um, and information about local farmers market, you can click the show notes, which is on the YouTube page as well, which is on that PLDL website. And if you want to share any pictures of when you're using the recipes, um, you can just use the hashtag BiblioBistro um, on any social media that you use. Until next time, bon, bon appétit! appétit.